All right, folks, out here doing a request to show how to set up one of these traps that I use for uh, trapping a lot of different animals, gray fox, bobcats, coyotes, badgers, coon. I pretty much stick to one type of trap and I, I don't change my, my setup very often. Every once in a while I'll use different scents for different animals. If I'm specifically trying to get like a skunk for somebody who's got it under their house, I'll use a certain gland scent. But most often in the woods, I don't use a lot of scents. I just use bait. And so today I'm gonna show you how to do a trap like I set up for one of these animals. And hopefully you can gain some knowledge from this, maybe use it in the future for yourselves. Um, I'm here in California and they are banning trapping in the next couple years, taking away a big portion of my life like they are with most things. But maybe one of you out there in the future can use some of this knowledge and help somebody around your area get rid of a nuisance animal or maybe just get into trapping and trap some furs for yourself. So here we go, I'll get you started here. I'm gonna give you a quick rundown on my equipment here. I use these guillotine, guillotine style, sorry, traps here with the door that falls straight down. I don't like the collapsible ones. I build these myself out of cage wire and stuff like that. For bait, I'm using a little widgeon. It's a duck. Duck season ended the other day. Me and my buddy went out and got some widgeon and some mallards. So after I breast them, I kind of just peel their skin back over their breasts and use them for bait. So I get a double use out of them. And then I always take with me my little tandy digger tool here. I've sharpened the edge so I can also bust off some branches if I need to be for cover. I have my bag here, big old gripper stick that I use to put animals, grab things inside if I need to adjust something in the trap after I set it. Another big handy tool I always bring is this yellow deal that this old school trapper, his name is Art Baker, one of the first trappers in California. Amazing guy, lives where I live. Retired now, can't really get out and trap no more, but he showed me how to make one of these. And it's real simple. It's just two dog clips attached to a rope. You take this rope, you hook it to your cage on one side, hook it to the cage on the other side, and you have a way to pick it up. Just like that, hopefully that gets it on camera for you so it makes it easier to carry it in the woods it's not so hard not so tough real simple real simple cheap to make you can get it right at there, any hardware store and make it yourself along with that i have some fishing line some feathers for some geese to hang for some attractant i got a bunch of different baits in this bag some stuff i use for squirrels and coons and all sorts of stuff but the big important thing is your bait your two tools your gripper your your cutting tool, digging tool. I got fishing line to hang uh, feathers around my traps to attract animals. And then I got this little bag here that's full of some of the feathers I used to breast those ducks out the other day. And so I've got a little bit of a hike to do going up this hill. I saw some tracks going up across the highway over here the, day, the other day, a good little highway of animal tracks. So I parked a good ways down from it. And then I cross the, the road and get off into the woods and I hike up to them. That way I don't put any human tracks going the same way they do. People won't see it as much. People won't steal your traps. Um, again, I trap right next to highways. I get a lot of flack from this from some people, but it is what it is. Uh, I think those animals use those, those highways right on the sides just as much as the humans use the highway. And so I, I target these areas a lot. I do real successful right next to highways and again i'm in california and there's not a lot of aware people people really aren't looking off the side of the road like you would maybe in another state where there's a lot of hunters people going around so i don't really stress about losing my traps or anything like that so i'm gonna go ahead and make this hike i'll get back to you guys here in a sec just had to make a quick stop here on my hike up to this trap notice this big old spine deer ribs deer spine Here's a big problem we have in California. The predators are out of control. They're devastating the rabbits, the quail, the deer, and no one seems to care about it. It, it breaks my heart every time I come here. I know it. it's part of nature, it's part of wildlife, but together we all need to help work so we can balance and conserve our, our wildlife for the survival of all species, not just ones people like or people feel it shouldn't be hunted, but we live in an ecosystem where we all need to 
do our part to ensure the survival of all species. And that means we have to take some predators. And I'm sick of seeing this, even though it's probably a good sign going up to my where I want to set my trap. Probably good animals coming through here. But and that's the whole reason I got into trapping was for animal management. It wasn't to make money. It wasn't for anything. I mean, there's cool, fun benefits about seeing the animals and stuff like that. But conservation, protection of all species, that's what got me into this. So I'm almost up to my spot. Um, I'll get back to you guys in a sec. So here's a spot I saw with some tracks. There's some beat down tracks right through there. Another grip right through here coming up through to this tree here. So I'm gonna focus on in between this tree and this stump right here. I like to use different uh, structures, trees, logs, stumps, anything that I can use to back my trap up to or to case my trap in so animals can't get around the side of it they can't dig in the back coyotes like to dig they always shake my doors they're they're, they're a nuisance a lot of times when you're trying to cage trap so i think this is a good spot i got stuff coming right from across the highway that are going right across the road right up through by this tree multiple tracks so i think this is the spot we're gonna we're gonna focus on and uh, i'm gonna go ahead and try to get a good spot set up for my camera so i can show you how i how i go about doing this okay before we get too crazy digging my trap and set up my camera so i can't move i'm gonna go hike over here to one of these trees show you how i get the cover for my trap to make it look like a den or another type of animal lives in there so i'm walking through here and i'm looking for some trees and i got tons of pine trees cedar trees fir trees every kind of tree in the world where i live so I go through here and I find some of these ones with these wide spread apart branches. Kind of like this. I like these ones right here. You see it? It's like a big fan spreads out. Another one, a big fan spreads out. So what I do is I break off a bunch of these green branches and I haul them over to my trap. So if I can't snap them off, they don't break off. That's what your little handy sharp tool here is for right here bam bam just break you off some back some, some some branches there bam now don't be shy make sure you get a bunch you can't just take a couple you need a lot now you're gonna want to make only one trip back and forth so you stack all these branches up the exact same direction so you have one area you can grab and carry them all all right i'm going to stack up a bunch right here and then uh i'll go ahead and carry it on back i'll show you that too another thing i find useful is not to go get all your branches from the one tree find an area where it's condensed with multiple trees that way you're not just damaging one tree you'll see me i'll be just smacking off the branches of multiple trees getting a good range of cover for my trap and uh, i'll stack all these up here and we'll we'll get you uh, carried back to the trap as you can see here i got a nice stack of branches they're all going the same direction that way it makes it easier to carry you don't have to make more than one trip you can just go ahead and grab that big old bunch right here, throw it over your shoulder, and carry it back. So we'll see you folks back there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and show you how to dig this spot out where I'm gonna go, take my good tool, and I go over here and start digging out a good area, all these pine needles and stuff that are on the ground right behind my cage here.
Now a big thing you want to do is you want to make sure you dig a flat bed here. You don't want it at an angle. You want your trap completely flat so your door falls straight down with gravity. No resistance on the sides. Gosh, it's winter. January up here. Should be cold. I'm getting hot. Holy smokes. I try to get it as close to the tree as I can for the backing, but sometimes the roots step its tough. You can't really get in there. So I think that's a good spot. It's pretty flat. It's got a bunch of dirt underneath that it's dug in. It's covered up on the bottom. Don't anticipate too much digging. I'm gonna go ahead and bring you in closer. I'm gonna show you how I set my duck up on the inside and Go ahead and get this started. Okay, so this is how she looks hanging on the inside. Well, I guess that's a drake, but either way, this is how they look hanging on the inside. I like to suspend them with that fishing line and try to spread their wings out, even though that one's wings were a little busted up. But I like to suspend them standing up like that. I feel like it just does better than if they're just sitting on the inside. Also, you can see I've dug out the front of this and made it kind of a a fan kind of a funnel so they funnels them animals up in there and uh so that's where you start off first thing always suspend that duck up on the inside before you cover it before you do anything else uh you cover that trap and then you want to hang your duck in there it's a pain you gotta uncover it always remember put your bait in first next thing before you cover it you find some big rocks look around find a couple rocks to set up on top of your trap these animals will get going crazy on the inside and knock your trap over you'll show up be no animal in the trap traps knocked over doors open be a bad day so go ahead and find some rocks set them up on top and then uh go ahead and start covering that trap all right okay folks. all right here's how it looks traps all completely covered i got a good little path going into the front come around the other side completely covered now this is important i like to get that back end covered as much as possible i want it to be dark back there see how dark it is in the back of that makes it look like a a good den or something like that so i think that's real important to do now i'm somewhere where it really freezes it gets cold up here in northern california and it gets sub-zero all the time where i'm at we get 10 plus feet of snow on average every year we've had up to 30 before so a big thing i do is i take this little wax chunk that i melted down from the ladies old candles unscented candles obviously you don't want to use some peach or blueberry or pumpkin spice whatever it is she likes out here so what you're gonna do is you're gonna wax up all these metal areas right here the sides of your door rub it all on there good so then rub it on the inside of this with the door re-rub the door get that wax all over so it doesn't freeze it doesn't stick it really helps everything stay together so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and then i'll show put this door on and i'll show you what it looks like well there she is that's how she looks with the door set up and everything come around the front it's all dug out it's so dark you can barely even can't even really see that duck in there so I always keep a lot of those breast feather ducks, breast feathers from the duck. And then let's try that again. And I like to spread them out. So after I do it, I'll just, I'll throw these feathers everywhere out in front of this trap. So it makes it look like something got killed and pulled up in that trap, you know? And then I feel like that feather on the ground really gets them, especially if there's animals walking high on that ridge, they can look down and see this. 
Also, I'm gonna tie a bunch of feathers hanging from these trees in here. So these animals that are coming across that highway, they'll see those feathers hanging in those trees. Don't just be like your house cat or something at home when you're dragging a feather. It'll go chasing and looking after it and it'll bring them, them animals right here into this trap. So also, big issue you gotta do. Can't forget, you gotta go up on in here and test her. Well, that worked a little too easy. Let's reset that. So I got my deal set up. Animal comes in, ding, 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 ding. Boom, trapped. So it sets, it works pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and reset it. I'm gonna hang some feathers in these trees. I'm gonna get back, show you how that looks. And then uh, we're gonna end this video, maybe come back here tomorrow and the next day and hopefully we get an animal real quick. And we'll show you how, how successful this is. All right. Okay, so this is what she looks like. See my trap over here to the right, right there. See this feather hanging. You can probably see some feathers hanging back there in the background. We'll walk up closer so you can see, but see this feather dancing around. When the wind's blowing at night, that'll bring in some animals. Walking out, doors up. Feathers on the ground. Some more feathers hanging. Hopefully these things will start blowing in the wind here tonight. And bring one of these, these uh, dogs or cats or something on in. So that's what she looks like. And that's how I set up my traps. Now, again, I use this setup for all animals. I, I've trapped bobcats, badgers, skunks, coons, gray fox, coyotes. Even had a mountain lion in one of my traps last year. It ripped the trap apart and got out, sadly. But uh, it, 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 I believe in this set. I trap a lot of different animals this way. And I know there's more than one way to skin a cat. If uh, anybody else has any other suggestions, other ideas, feel free to hit that comment down there and let me know what you think. Um, I love scrutiny and criticism. You can uh, go ahead and feel free to say whatever you want to me. I, I love it. I, I love all ideas and all scrutiny. So hopefully we'll get an animal here in a couple days, finish up this video, and we'll, we'll get her online for you. To my subscribers all around the world watching my videos, I, I appreciate you guys, and thanks for your interest. Have a good day.